Okay, who's doing the opening prayer? From last session? Praise God. Okay. You know, if, if, if no one is singing, then anyone can do, no problem. Yeah, anyone can do the opening prayer. Who would like to do the opening prayer? Okay, praise God. Stephen, would you like to do the opening prayer? Yes. Okay, praise God. Yes, go ahead, Stephen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have blessed, blessed us already and that you have spoke, that you have that you have brought us in this um, in this bible study thank you lord that you have that you are showing us your word lord thank you lord that you have that you have that you that the that, that thank you lord that you have that you have that you have blessed us and that 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 uh, that that uh, that we already have the thank you Lord that we have that the Holy Spirit has has power in us. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you Stephen. Amen. Thank you, Stephen, for that beautiful opening prayer. Praise God. Okay. Would anyone like to do the recap or is someone assigned to do the re, uh, recap? Brother Neil, would you like to do the recap from last session? Praise God, sister. Yeah, I can do it. Uh, yeah, praise God. Praise God. Uh, so last class, uh, we basically discussed um, main things. One is... Uh, what is it to, to be to have Christ's nature? Uh, and then we also discussed Romans 12, 12 uh, which was mainly about training of the mind. So, uh, Romans 12, 12, be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind uh, that you may prove what is good and excel with the word of God. Uh, so, basically, renewing of the mind is when you change your old overthinking, the new higher thinking. Uh, and then we also looked into what Jesus' ministry, ministry mainly comprised of, uh, which was preaching, uh, which is basically conversion of the person's mind, uh, and then teaching, uh, which is basically when you accept Jesus and you make him your Lord, God, and Savior. Uh, teaching, right? Teaching is a, a person becomes a disciple of Jesus. Yeah, so isn't that equal to you making Jesus your Lord, God, and Savior? Yes, yeah, that is called born again. And then once I become born again, now I have the hunger, the thirst. And that's when I study God's word and I become a disciple of Jesus. Oh, so becoming a disciple is different from accepting Jesus as your Lord, God, and Savior. Yeah, teaching means becoming a disciple. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then it's all followed by signs and wonders, which is easy. Mm, we learned uh, John 8.31, that is, if you obey my teaching, you are really my disciples. So Jesus said, you need to obey. He didn't say obey his teaching, but it's more about once you become his disciples, you have the thirst uh, for his work, uh, then you are really his disciples. Uh, in Galatians 2.20, Paul says, uh, I've been crucified uh, with Christ, but now Christ lives in me. Um, and through which we mainly discuss the point on Christ's nature. Uh, the first point on Christ's nature, which is uh, we are the righteousness of God. And righteousness meant uh, we are at right standing with God, or we have the very nature of God. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's about it. Yeah.
Praise God. Thank you so much, brother, for the lovely recap. Praise God. Okay, over to you, Alistair. I th- I think uh, Jaden raised his hand. Yes, Jayden. I raised my hand because um, all of you were frozen on my screen. Oh, okay, <laughs> praise God. Yeah, okay, over to you, Alistair. Okay, so can you turn your videos on? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Praise God. Okay, so uh, I remember on the first day which we had started this youth session, we had learned on understanding God's true nature. Those who were there in the beginning were, will remember. We learned on understanding God's true nature. Praise God. But let's go deeper into that, understanding God's true nature. Yes? Yeah. Okay, before we go uh, and see the scripture, write down this one point. The ignorance of the truth. Write down the ignorance of the truth. The ignorance of the truth. Separates us from the life of God. Separates us from the life of God. separates us from the life of God. Within us, life of God within us. The ignorance of the truth separates us from the life of God within us and prevents us from experiencing it. And prevents us from experiencing it. Someone can put in the chat also and prevents us from experiencing it. Praise God. Okay. Praise. Let's, let's go to uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 22 onwards. Now we learned understanding God's true nature, how, you know, Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 26, and we saw how we have the power in the words. But let's go a little bit deeper into that, okay, and see what Galatians chapter 3, verse 22 onwards is saying. Now see this. But the scripture has imprisoned all things under the power of sin so that was promised through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Can you put KJV? Someone can read it from KJV? Yeah, Nathan. But the scripture hath concluded all of the sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Okay, then. The, the next verse. Yeah, read up till 26. Okay. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under... Uh, Enough to scroll down. We are, no yeah. long, we are no longer under our schoolmaster. For ye, we are... For ye, all... For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ. Christ Jesus. Okay. Um, now, before faith came, okay, before faith came, we were all under the law. We were all held captive under the law. Now, why I'm saying held captive is because if you did not obey the law, what was your destiny? Hell. If I did not obey the law, my destiny would be hell. That's what the Bible says. We are all held captive under the law. Because according to the law, we can't keep the law. And that's why we are supposed to go to hell. Yes? Yes. Yes. Now, see this. The scripture is saying, 
uh, in 24th was the law. What was the law? What was the law? 613. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's 613 laws. Now the law is a guardian, a schoolmaster of us until Jesus came. Because the law was the way I was going in and no one could keep the law. We tried and tried and tried to keep the law, but none of us can keep this law. Okay. And now, because none of us can keep this law, that is why this law is a school master. It, in, in other words, it's like a teacher, like how we have school master, our teachers in school, correct? Yes. Yeah. Like that, this law was our school master to bring us unto Christ. Now, why is it saying to bring us unto Christ? To make us realize we need a savior. Yeah. Because the law, many times if you ask people, the, the one who come new in the world, if you ask them why was the law given, they will quickly go on to say the law was given so that I may obey it. Have you heard that? The law was given so that I can obey it. Even we thought that, correct? Yes. But actually the law was not given so that I can go and obey it. But the law is given to bring us unto Christ to realize that I am a sinner. I am living a life of sin and I do need a savior. Who's that savior? Jesus Christ. So this law was bringing us unto Christ so that through Christ, we are justified by faith. Now, what do you mean by that word justified by faith? We are worthy. We are the, right, we are the righteousness of the Lord. Okay. Now, wherever the word faith is mentioned in the Bible, especially the new covenant, the New Testament. Does anyone know what this faith means? Most of the time. Okay. Faith in, Je faith in Jesus. Yes. This faith is the faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. In the new covenant. Now, the Old Testament, it was what? The Old Testament shadow of the new covenant that was to be revealed. And now the New Testament, what was written is now revealed in Jesus Christ. So that means uh, in the Old Covenant, whatever was written, Jesus fulfilled it. That's why Jesus has not come to go away by the law and to, you know, wash, the, wash away the law and the prophets. Jesus has not come to wash away, but he has come to fulfill the law and the prophets. Okay. And how did he do that? He did that by setting one law, that is the law of love. Because this law of love, Jesus has given us two laws, that is love your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. When I obey these two things, now I, I, when I love others, I will not go and hate, I will not go and steal, I will not go and kill, I will not go and commit adultery. All this, I will not do when these two laws are given. So these two laws are fulfilling the old covenant, not demolishing the old covenant. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. I am not come to go away with the law and the prophets. I am not come to go away, but I am come to fulfill what was spoken. Because the Old Testament was a shadow of the New Testament. What was to come? Example, if you are in a, in a room, okay? And I am near the door and uh, I can't see you, but I can see your shadow. And based on that shadow, can I see what you're doing? Yes. Yes. Example, example, in the hot sun outside. Okay. In the hot sun outside, you are doing some running, exercising. Okay. Skipping, running. Now, based on your shadow on the ground because of the sun. Can I see what you're doing? You're skipping, you're jumping, you're running. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. 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 In the same way, the old covenant was a shadow of what was to come. That is the new covenant. Yes? Yes. yes. Praise God. Now, that justifying by faith, I mentioned. Justified by faith means made righteous through Jesus made the righteousness of God now there is a big there is a big meaning behind that 
the law was given and the law was given to be a schoolmaster a guardian until jesus came so as believers who are made righteous by faith in jesus we are declared the children of god and we are declared the righteousness of god now uh, put that galatian chapter 3 was knock uh, enough your hand is raised do you want to say anything Okay, put that Galatians chapter three, verse twenty nine. Verse twenty nine. Put this. Put the verse twenty nine. Okay, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So this scripture is saying that if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and you are heirs according to the promise. Now, how we are heirs? in other words we receive the inheritance now how do we receive the inheritance through the abraham seed now if you see abraham abraham was a very prosperous man okay he was experiencing the god kind of prosperity now when i believe in jesus i am by default made a descendant of abraham and now i receive the inheritance that abraham received i received it according to the promise from the word of god according to god's word that is written because god's word is the document that shows me i received everything that was with abraham now if you see abraham abraham is called the father of faith am i right yes yes now what do you mean by that word father of faith why why we call abraham the father of faith because he believed the word uh, god gave him yeah because Ab abraham was the first man who became righteous by faith to be justified by faith now how was he justified by faith what is the meaning of the word justification to be in right standing with god no that is righteousness what is justification the case has been tried and you are found guilty Okay. My case has been tried and you're not found guilty. Yeah, my case is tried. I am found not guilty. That is called justification. Now, Miss Scott, someone is saying bad to good. No, no, no. Justification means my case is tried, found not guilty. Now Abraham, okay, he was justified by faith, and because he was justified by faith, now today. we are justified by faith also now whatever jesus has done for me i believe in that and that's why i'm justified by faith because i believe in that promise of the word of god when i receive that promise now i believe in that promise when i believe in that promise i'm justified by faith not by my works now if people would understand how good god is they would only live for him now we i told you we are going to study on understanding god's true nature now to understand the true nature of god it is impossible to understand the true nature of god by the law if any of us are trying to understand the true nature of god saying that if i do this 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 then i will experience all that god has for me we are actually going wrong because if i'm trying to qualify myself by the works okay by my works then it is wrong because to understand the true nature of god it is not by my works justifying by my works but it is justification by faith now many times do you know why we come in front of god with hopelessness yeah wrong thinking no okay wrong thinking what is that wrong thinking being conformed to this world rather than the word of god okay why we come before god with hopelessness thinking that god will not heal me some people will say i don't believe that god will heal me you know why because i am thinking that according to my works i am justified that's the main reason where we go wrong thinking that god will give me the punishment god will show me the penalty according to my wrong works but the true nature of god is 
he will not justify me by my wrong works but i am justified by the faith and this faith is of the son of god how many of you remember we saw galatians 2:20 last week no one Hello, faith, I asked the question. Faith is a gift faith? from God, right? I am I am asking a question and you are giving me a different answer. I am asking you a question. How many of you remember we studied Galatians 2.20 last week? No one remembers? Galatians 2.20, Paul is saying, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ in lives in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me. Right? Yes. Now you remember? Yes. Yeah. So, so that means this justification by faith. This faith is not our faith. This faith is the faith of Jesus believing in the finished works of Jesus on the cross. That is called the true justification of That's why I told you, the one, the main reason why we come for hopelessness with God is, we think, I, I made a mistake, I did not pray today, I did not do properly, and God will punish me. God has given me the sickness because he wants to punish me. God has given me this poverty because he wants to teach me a lesson. Actually, God has not given you that to teach you a lesson. No. If anyone is thinking that, you are absolute wrong i'll say that again you are absolute wrong because god is not trying to justify you by your works by your wrong mistakes because i am not supposed to be justified by the law that's why i told you why we come before god with hopelessness is because we justify ourselves by the law and not by the faith of jesus christ now this law this law is our schoolmaster our guardian and this law was guarding us okay now the law was not inaccurate the law was absolutely perfect and accurate the law was not inaccurate but it was incomplete write it down the law was not inaccurate but it was incomplete and to complete this law what did god do he sent his only begotten son that is jesus who completed the law and finished it once and for all that's why i told you the old testament is the shadow of what was to come the old testament was not complete the law was not complete that's why jesus came and he completed it for me 2000 years ago by that i am now saved and transformed so jesus came fulfilled the law and now because he fulfilled the law my life should not be based any more longer on the law but now my life should be based on the finished works of jesus on the cross on the faith that's when i'm justified by my faith not by my works if anyone is saying that i did this i did this i did this that's why i qualify actually you're not in line with the word because the word is saying he sent his son jesus who died for us took the punishment and now he has completed the law once and for all what we have to do only believe and we are justified in god's kingdom that's why when we believe we shall be we shall receive god is not looking at our hard work god is not looking at what you did wrong god is not looking at us mistakes we think that i made a mistake so god is coming with a stick to thump you on the head correct could you slow down praise god okay so we think that god is uh, you know coming with a stick and thumping us on the head because i made a mistake right yes is that according to the word no no will he is he ready with a stick to come and thump you on the head whenever you make a mistake of course not no i was told see you are telling lies see you are doing this mistake see god is watching and yeah. they, and the parents you know and, and and this was before i came into the world and they would point to the photo of jesus see jesus is angry is watching you <laughs> yeah yeah 
that that you know why we why we think like that because we have a wrong understanding that's why i told you if we are with why we come before god with hopelessness thinking that god will not give me is because i have a wrong mindset thinking that i did not do it correctly because i did not do it correctly god will punish me that's a absolute lie of the devil god is not going to punish you because you did not do it right no 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 if i am not if i am not ready if i am not experiencing what god has done it is because i have not believed and i have not received because the only way to receive is by believing that's why the scripture is saying what is the scripture saying be justified by faith and not by your works when i am justified by faith i am activating what christ has done for me on the cross and that is when i receive all that god has for me so this law was a guardian this law was a schoolmaster and this law was guiding us guarding us until christ came and christ finished the law once and for all and now we are no longer under the law but now we are under the grace and that's why the bible says we are justified by faith not by my works let's go just give me a second Praise God. Praise God. Did you have a question, Jizar? Oh, I uh, I wanted to mention something. Okay, I'll just yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I can I say it, Alistair? Yeah. Yes, I just wanted to mention that a lot of times we think that we are good based on hmm. the amount of good things we do. We feel yeah. good about ourselves if we pray that day, if we if we do yeah. the right thing that day. we think that the more good we do the more good we become but the word of god says the word of god says that if you do one sin you you guilty of all the sins god's standard is holy and so we can never be good based on how much we do we are never qualified based on our works we are only good and we are only righteous based on what jesus did for us on the cross we are nothing without jesus that's it it's him who cleanses us it's him who cleanses our mind it's him who cleanses our ways and i also wanted to mention something a lot of people they think that the scriptures are a formula the okay the moment i say uh, by the stripes of jesus i'm healed i uh, i'm going to receive my healing they think it's a formula but confessing the scriptures is not going to move god confessing the scriptures is just is just to understand that god has moved is just to receive what god has already done That's yeah. why they say, "No God. storm the heaven, please storm mm-hmm. the heaven for me." Yeah. What is yeah. that storm the heaven? That's absolute wrong. I'm supposed to storm my own mind. <laughs> yeah, praise uh, God. Yeah. We will study on the law more. Okay, praise God. Because this is something that we are most of the time operating in. Because we think only if I do, I can qualify. but yeah. grace is what grace is i'm qualified even though i don't deserve even though i don't qualify it is his power and his ability given unto me by his love and by his willingness not by my strength when i'm under grace okay there is nothing of my strength when i'm under grace it is everything of christ strength always remember that grace is nothing of what i do grace is of what christ has done for me and what has christ done for me what christ did for me 2000 years ago he has saved me and that's why i have received salvation praise god praise god thank you jesus so are you understanding yes praise god yeah yes okay let me show you the scripture go to john chapter 1 verse 17 we will come back to this galatian 3 22 onwards okay we have not finished it's scripture john chapter 1 verse 17 now what when when i say john chapter 1 what comes in your mind in the beginning was the, beginning the word was the word and the word was with god, god and the word was with god. god and the word was made flesh correct yes, yes. yeah okay see the 17th verse 
For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came because of my good works. Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ. Came because of my good works. Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ. Now, how many times do we think I have received grace, I have received favor, I have received blessing because of my good works? Yeah, many times. But is this come because of my works or because of what Jesus has done? What Jesus has done. You know, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. How this works is, I we think that I have to do this, this, this to qualify myself. But it is not about what I do. It is that Jesus has done this, 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 this. And that is why I am qualified. That's why Amen. what is grace? What is grace? Grace is grace. Correct? God's willingness to use his ability and power on my behalf, even though I don't deserve it. Grace is God's willingness to use my power and his my power. ability. His power. His, uh, power. his no, ability. Why, why, why I'm saying my power, my ability, my authority? Why? What do we think? Yeah, yeah my, my power. Ability. Yeah. My power. But whose power is it? Is it my power or Christ's power? Christ's power. So from today onwards, are you going to change your thinking, not my strength, but God's grace? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Come on. If we are going to do it by our strength, you know where you are the first candidate to go to hell. I'm telling you. <laughs> now why I'm saying this? Because the first candidate to go to heaven is a person who's saying, Lord, thank you for doing it from the for, for me on the cross, what I have to do? Believe. For by grace you are saved through faith, not through my works, through faith. We receive salvation, it is by grace, but how do I receive it? Through my faith, not through my works. Come on, are you, is it making sense? Are you understanding? Yes. 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 That's why I told you the law is not inaccurate, but it is incomplete. Now, Jesus has given us so much evidence that he is just like the father. John chapter 14, uh, we see he's saying in, in the chapter, he's saying, who has seen me has seen the fa father. He's saying that I am in the father and the father is in me. He is saying, okay, so many things, so many things, right? He, when, if you see in the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, if you go and see, there are so many things that Jesus said that I am. Let's just like my heavenly father, correct? Yeah. Yes. But today, the father is so misrepresented and accused about not keeping the law. Am I right? Jesus was, uh, you know, Jesus was misrepresented and accused because he did not keep the law. But actually, did he keep the law? Yes. yes. He, was, he was the only man that kept the law. Now, today, I keep the law. I keep the law. Because God has given us this one law. What is that law? Two laws. That is the law of love. Love your neighbor and love your God. Now, yeah. I, it is not that I'm not supposed to keep the law. I'm keeping the law, but I can't keep the law by my strength. But instead, I need his grace to keep this law. Praise God. If any one of us is trying to keep the law by my strength, we are going to fail, fail big time. Fail miserably. Because if because by our good works, we don't qualify to receive. It is by grace and truth that came by Jesus Christ when I believe now I'm qualified. How are we qualified to go to heaven? Many of us say, if I do this, 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 then God qualifies me to go to heaven. Actually, you're the biggest candidate who's going to go to hell. Because to go to heaven, you need what? Grace. Grace, grace. And what is this grace? This grace is not my willingness. It's not that I told God, God, please, please give me your grace. No, it is grace that is given by God, not because I asked him, but it's given by God. God's willingness to use his power, his ability, and his authority 
on my behalf, even though I don't deserve it, even though I don't qualify it. That's why we would give this one example. Example, if there is a student asking for grace mark. Now, does he deserve the grace mark? No. no. Of course not. No. According to him, he has got certain marks. And according to those marks, he is supposed to do the whole year again. Yeah. In the same way, according to my works, I am supposed to go to hell. But then it is Jesus, God, who has given me this grace through Jesus. And that's why today I am exalted. If you see, you might be in a, in a place where no one recognizes you. No one knows you. Aren't we many a times in that condition? We don't we feel like no one knows me. No one remembers me. No one, you know, no one knows what I do. You might be in a place where no one even remembers what you do. You might be in that place. Of course, you might be in that place. Okay. But let me tell you, grace knows how to find you. Amen. Grace, because, because grace is not my strength. Grace is God's grace. God's ability. And this grace knows how to find you and to bring you out in the open where you are exalted. Where you are exalted. I tell you, uh, my life before I came into the world was absolute a mess. Why? All the time in games, cartoons. So I'm living that way. And all the time getting sickness after sickness, fever and all. Fever every time, fever. And uh, actually, I was doing actually a school, okay, normal, high marks, otherwise nothing else. And this was my daily life, every time. I was living a normal life, studying, playing games, and that was my daily lifestyle. But the moment I received the truth, the word of God, I got exalted in such a way that I don't know how the Lord opened doors for me to go and preach. I really don't know how it happened. Okay. Only the thing I can come in and say is testify. Otherwise, I really don't know how the Lord works. And even in your life, you might be saying, I really don't know how the Lord works. In your life, you might also be experiencing changes from where you were to where you are, you never expected to be in that place. Right? Today where I am, I never expected to be. And why am I in this place? Because of God's grace. Why are you in that place? Because of God's grace. Yeah. You know that there is one, this uh, song, God will make a way. Correct? Do you know that song? Yes. Yes? yes? How many of you agree with that? That God will make a way for you. Yes. 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 All those who agree with that, your answers are wrong. Because God is not going to make a way. God has already made a way for you. When he created you, he made a way for you. He will not make a way for you. When he created the world, he made a way for you. That I know that this human race will be saved by Jesus. He knew the master plan already. He knew the way. So God will never make you away. God has already made you away. But now how do I discover this way? Through the grace of God, I discover what God has already made available for me 2,000 years ago and finished for me today. And what Christ has done for us is absolutely amazing. And, and, and I can't do it by my works. It is by God's grace. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Because of sin, we were all deserved judgment and punishment. But then grace sent Jesus to die for us and to take the penalty of our sins. Write that down. Grace sent Jesus. Grace sent Jesus. To die for us, to die for us, to die for us, and take the consequence, and take the 
consequences and to take the consequences for a past life for a past life for a past life belief system belief system belief system and the nature of sin and the nature of sin he took it on he took it on on all on himself 2000 years ago so that today we are saved that is why ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 one of my favorite scriptures says that for by grace are you saved through faith and this is not of yourself it is the great grace of god the gift of god it is nothing of my works nothing that i have qualified that's why i'm saying that word qualify again and again if any of us are trying to qualify by my works actually we cannot qualify because the way to qualify is by the grace it is by grace Tell me if you are understanding. You know why we don't experience the life which we actually want to live, that life of prosperity, that life in God's kingdom. You know why we don't experience that life? Because we try to work for it rather than receive it. We try to achieve that life by my works. I should not try to achieve this life. by my works i should achieve this life by jesus is works that's why i'm repeating that word again jesus is works jesus was never ever dependent on his works but on the father you know if you see abraham abraham okay abraham was not in the law the covenant of the law he was because the law was not given at that time so he was in the uh, covenant of the promise just like us okay not grace covenant of promise grace is came through jesus christ but grace was not there at abraham's time that time it was through the promise if you see did abraham say lord i will get a child by my works no 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 did he say when the god had told him to sacrifice isaac did he say lord that one son i got that one also you're telling me to sacrifice no no we would start getting second thoughts we would start going and telling others you know what god is such a punishing god you see correct no, no? but yeah. now everyone is laughing but when it comes to real life yeah that's so true <laughs> yeah we are like that you and i'm like that we all like that because why why we don't live that life is because if you see abraham abraham lived the life of such prosperity because he was not governed by his works but he was governed by the promise which was given to him praise you jesus praise god ya yeah, jizel i think the secret to this the secret to being firm even during trials and tribulations is even before the trials and tribulations we need to develop a habit of being god conscious we need to be conscious of what god has done for us we need to be conscious of how much god loves us rather than how much we love god or rather than how much how good we are because we'll fall some day if we are walking in that mentality and we cannot give something we don't have right so we need to experience the love of god first you need to walk this life experiencing and being aware and being conscious of god's love and only then when you so god conscious you you've developed such a strong relationship with the father and now when a trial and tribulation comes you know that your friend john 15 15 says you're the friend of christ so when you're so strong in this relationship with christ and when the when the trials and tribulations come you know that he is taking care of it and it won't come as a shock you know the one who has taken care of it 
you know the one who is providing goodness so being god conscious is so important yeah you praise god us you know what that means sin consciousness and god grace consciousness righteousness consciousness now sin con- that's why if you see sin consciousness is what i made a mistake i am not perfect i because i i tried to do it by my works but i disqualified right and i am so got into the bondage thinking that god is going to punish me god is going to punish me god is going to punish me why because i am so sin conscious but grace conscious is what god will not punish me because instead he took the punishment on himself that is grace consciousness sin consciousness is based on what i do and the mistake i did uh, sorry sin consciousness is based on what i do and the mistake i made grace consciousness is made on what jesus has done for me that's why grace consciousness is what jesus has done this 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 and that is why i'm qualified for salvation there's god okay there is a hand this melanie de souza yeah 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 sister yes hi alison um i have a question for you so yeah. you were talking about um grace right yeah so if we believe that jesus has saved us from our sin what is the importance of holy confession why do we have to do a confession if we know that jesus is already going to save us from sin praise god now uh how okay example okay example let me give an example why this holy confession comes uh example uh when, when you wash your hands okay can you say in the morning you wash your hands after breakfast so can you say now the germs whole day will not attack me for the next month no the the, the germs will not come again they will come again yes they will come again now i am you know i am already born again i am already believe in jesus now why i do that confession of forgiveness the holy confession is because i will still fall i am born again my spirit is completely brand new but it is because my mind is not renewed i may fall i will 100% fall only one man did not fall that was jesus everyone else fell we will all fall but then but then i have the grace of god to come back up and that's why you go and do confession because i fell but then i'm confessing and i'm asking for forgiveness because i fell and i'm coming back up to that place which god has given to me what is that place that place is the righteousness of god so 100% you know when you say holy confession means you will fall you will fall but you are going and confessing your sin and you are asking for repentance you are renewing your mind because one your mind was not renewed that's why you went into that mistake but now you are going and you are confessing the sin your mind is renewed and now you are saying lord i'm sorry for what i have done i fell lord but you have given me your grace you have given me your righteousness that is building me up and lord i am not going to live in this pit i'm going to come back up and live in the righteousness which you have made me that's why example if you fall on off the chair what will you do you will get, get up. up you will get up and go and sit on the chair because the chair never broke you just fell by accident you will go lift yourself up and go and sit back on the chair in the same way when we fall from the righteousness what am i supposed to do go back and understand his righteousness and come back into that position that is called holy confession when i fall my mind is sinning because my mind is not renewed my spirit is completely brand new my spirit is completely brand new but it is my mind that is unrenewed now when i'm saying when i'm going for holy confession i'm renewing my mind understanding i made a mistake but i'm coming back up into that new nature of christ that is in me that is the righteousness of god Now you understood sister Yes I did thank you so much That's God. that's the reason why we have holy confession Yes because we will 100% fall Everyone fell even Peter fell Peter fell actually if you see Peter let me give you an example of Peter Peter was he the one who said Jesus you are the messiah you came from God Yes Yes very next moment did he say Jesus please don't go Yes. Yes. What did 
Jesus said, get away from Satan. Did he make a mistake? Yes. Yeah. You know the second mistake which he made when he was preaching? Okay. If you see in Galatians chapter 2, Peter act, actually by accident, he went and teached about the law, taught about the law. You know, we, we all fall into that law, no? You know what Paul did? Paul fired Peter for falling in that law. So did he make a mistake again? Yes. Yeah. Being the one who Jesus said, I'm going to build the church on Peter, did he fall? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But does that mean God did not use him? No. It was his soul that was sinning, but he repented. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Praise God. That is the reason why we have holy confession. When we fall, we are supposed to come back and repent. Yes? Because what is the renewing of the mind? Repentance. Repentance means renewing the mind. Because my mind was unrenewed. And because my mind was unrenewed, that's why you made the mistake. But now you are coming back to the Lord and you are renewing your mind. And that's when you're saying, Lord, I made a mistake. But now I'm coming back to you, Lord. And I'm repenting. I'm renewing my mind according to your word. Thank you, Jesus. So anyone else would like to ask anything? Did you understand? Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is the difference between my strength and God's strength. The law and God's grace. Thank you, Jesus. So does anyone? Yeah, yeah, Giselle. Alston, I just wanted to mention one more thing. See, whenever we sin, right, uh, the first thought comes, we feel guilty, we feel worthless, we feel useless. That's because those are the lies of the devil. Yeah, it's accepting, Yeah, that's, that's being sin conscious. They're, that's accepting the lies of the devil. See, that might be the experience. An experience is just a fact, but that's not a truth. Don't look at what you see. Don't look at what you feel, but look at the truth. Look at what you believe. Because in the spirit, you are perfect. In the spirit, you're a brand new creature. And your job on this earth is to make your mind agree to your spirit. Is to make your mind agree to what God has stored in your spirit. So don't be, uh, don't be guilty or don't be sin conscious. Don't dwell on what sin you've done. You know, I've been, I'm born again, so I'm sinning over and over again. No, don't be sin conscious. That's why God came to save us. Be conscious that God has made you his righteousness. And keep confessing Psalm 23.3. The Lord has restored my soul. He has led me to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You need to know that you are the righteousness of the Lord, not by your works, but because of what Jesus has done on the cross for you. So yeah. always agree to the word of God. Make your mind disciplined to agree to the word of God. Yeah, praise God. Yeah, over to you, Alistair. And, and, and don't take grace as a license for sin. If you are going to say that, Giselle, then everyone will think, okay, I can go and commit sin no. and then grace will be available. That is also there. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, no. not supposed to, yeah. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just adding that to your... Correct, correct. You grace is not a license to sin. See, if you think grace is a license to sin, means you don't understand grace. Means you don't understand the love of God. When you don't actually understand the love of God, you'll be like, yeah, anyways, I'll sin. Okay, I'll give you a small example. Suppose you love your parents so much, okay? You love your near and dear ones so much. So will you purposely try to break your trust with them? No, right? Because you know how much they love you. You love them because how much they love you. Same way, when you're so conscious of, of how much God loves you, you wouldn't want to break the law. It's, it's coming out of a place of love. It's not coming out of a place, the motive of uh, uh, the motive of not breaking the law is not fear the motive is not um, to be good the motive is because you love god because you know that sin sin is a barrier between you and god and you don't want anything to come between you and god so the uh, so two people can have the same action but different intentions so when you truly understand how much god loves you that god loves you god loved you when you were a sinner god loved you when you were hopeless God loved you. God loves you just as you are. Whether you sinned or didn't sin, he loves you the same. When you're so conscious of God's love for you, that's when you automatically start fulfilling the law. It's out of love. Yeah. So you and, have, I can yeah. Full, and I can fulfill the law only by the strength of the Holy Spirit. Praise yeah, God. praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
Okay, yeah, Giselle, praise God. Okay, praise Jesus. Thank you so much, Alston, for this beautiful teaching. We all needed this because a lot of times we, you know, we uh, uh, it slips oh. off our mind. Yeah, we all needed this because it slips it slips off our mind that okay, sometimes you know after coming to the word, suppose we don't perform well, those thoughts can come to our mind. Oh, what did I do now? And how could I be like this? You know, I'm preaching here, but look at me, look at what I'm doing. God loves you more now, okay, because you are born of God. So always be God conscious. And uh, Alison beautifully explained that. Praise Jesus. Thank okay, God. are there any testimonies for today? Would anyone like to share any testimonies? Come on, someone. There should be a testimony. Come on. The 18 of us. Okay, praise God. I'll share what I shared um, at the, um, the global healing uh, ministry today. Yeah, so... Um, I used to, um, I've been in the word of God since 22 years, I think now. Yes. And um, I've been on the children's ministry, children and youth ministry for about a year. So um, no doubt I've been studying the word of God. I have been um, teaching it, preaching it. I've been ministering to a lot of people and all of that. Okay. But um, I never, um, I am obviously applying it in my own life in, you know, um, in my studies, whether it be, um, uh, you know, um, if I was, if I, um, if sickness tried to get the better of me, then, you know, fighting um, headaches, fighting aches and pains, fighting colds, fevers, all that, you know, in our family, all of that. So it's not like I'm not seeing things happen. Um, but yes, so all of that is happening. I'm applying the word of God and, you know, it's good. Um, but I never, um, you know, I never joined. So Sister Jocelyn and all, they all started the, on Saturdays, they started the, um, the global children's healing um, sessions where um, the children do the healing. The children teach uh, the adults and the children do the healing. I never really, um, I never really went there. Uh, because I was like, I I'm already, I mean, I, you know, Sister's saying, oh, you know, here's the time to apply the word of God. You know, um, you're learning the theory, the full week, you know, you've been, you know, a lot of theory knowledge or theoretical knowledge, all of that. And now Saturdays is the time where you get to um, apply it, practically um, apply the word of God. And um, praise God, you know, I always thought like, okay, I'm applying the word of God in my life. So I don't need to go on Saturdays. Like I don't need to do it because I'm anyway applying the word of God. Okay. So this is my thinking. Okay. So I don't need to, because anyway, every, every day I'm applying, it's not like I'm not applying the word of God, just because I'm not going on there, doesn't mean I'm not applying the word of God. Um, but um, after, uh, yeah, when I, this year, actually beginning this year, I really struggled um, because I, I myself, um, I fell. Okay. Um, I, I, I started losing, I wasn't spending as much time uh, with God as I was previously. And I really, uh, really, really um, felt the brunt of it. Um, I was struggling in school for the first time. Um, like really, um, you know, I was stressed. I've never been like stressed like that before. Um, I was, um, you know, um, every day I would come home from school and I would just cry. Um, cry because I was, I felt like the whole world <laughs> All the full world's burdens were put on me. I was acting as if um, Jesus didn't die for me 2000 years ago. Um, I was acting like 1 Peter 5, 7 was not, uh, was not coming into action, was not real. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I was unhappy. I was not, I was not living, um, I was not, um, you know, living that abundant life that God wants me to live. So um, out of desperation one day, I was, uh, I really, 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 um, I sat down and I was, I, I was in a really bad state and I was like, uh, Jesus, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's happened. Um, I, I know that I haven't been, uh, uh, you know, spending time with you as much, but I don't know what to do. I am stuck. Uh, I don't know where to start again. I, I, you know, I felt that I lost my fire. Okay. I felt that I lost my, um, my desire uh, to learn about the word of God. I, I, I felt like that. I just felt unworthy. 
you know i felt that you know uh, all the thoughts are running you know you you go and you preach but you know you're not doing any of that you're just a hypocrite you know so those are the types of thoughts that i was getting and i didn't battle them and i let myself i let myself but try to be justified by the law by my works you are not spending time with the word of god you are not you are not doing what you are uh, telling others to do you are not doing this you are not doing that yeah you are not speaking the word of god you know you are not worthy of asking god for help you are not worthy of asking you know receiving god's favor so and i didn't realize that i was actually in that is pride because again the focus was on you so like that like i really do it, it it's terrible you know after living a life with god for so long and suddenly you know like you go back and you're in the world and then you lose touch and you actually this time when this time when you go back into the world you feel it 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 really hits you so i sat that day and i and i just asked god i said i don't know what to do and um that day um i um i suddenly uh, you know i was always on alison's group for warriors uh, for christ i was always on there but i never really uh, never really attended any of his sessions but that day i got the as soon as i asked you know that day i got the message you know um i think alison or his mom would said you know you can all join now i think uh, they always send it before class started 10 15 minutes so i joined that day i joined um and um, i just i just felt led to join so i joined and after that day um i started joining every day and i didn't i didn't i didn't um, i did it because i wanted to i didn't know because you know i wanted god you know i i wanted myself to feel um this but i just did it because i knew i was losing touch and i needed to start spending more time with god but i struggled with it so it was at a good time as well because it was night for me and um it, it it was just easier so i started you know started um listening learning you know um for a good thing you know i was always teaching 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 i was only studying the word of god because i had to go and teach so now what i i started learning because i wanted to learn about god because um you know i was talking to my mom and i was talking to my parents and they were telling me what you're doing is this is this is not right this is not what the word of god is saying you know you're not you they 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 you know the holy spirit through them told me that i'm i'm not um i'm trying to be justified again by my works by how good i am you know not how good god is not how faithful god is so the focus was on myself so then i started learning because i was like um i was so happy that you know that's why it's the good news you know because because jesus no matter how much you fall no matter how unfaithful you think you are no matter how um unworthy you think you are he will still use you it's not about how again today it really hit me when sister jocelyn said your relationship with god is not how faithful you are but it is based on how faithful god is and um when i realized that i was so um it was this joy you know i i felt like like you know i wouldn't have that that comfort that peace and i started learning and then i started going on the saturday um healing session and the first day i went i was a bit rusty because i hadn't um healed others like you know used uh, exercise my faith and you know um the word of god and others but i learned you know many a times i was so insecure um on the ministry because i felt if i say one thing wrong then gone because i was condemning myself if you do this one thing wrong what will people think of you you're on the ministry so constantly it was a battle and i didn't i was not um i i it was it was really really challenging because constantly the more this is what i think then i learned when you get into the word of god this is what satan is going to try to do he's going to try and get you to be as far away from god as possible he's going to make you um you know he's going to try and you know make let fear knock on your door if you let it in then you're gone <laughs> um and i've and i've let it in constantly like in the past i have not taken control over it but i praise god um as i started attending i started learning you know i went and i said you know what i don't care 
Now I learned that you know why, why should I bother what others think of me? It's not it's not about me at the end of it. I am not doing it because I want other people to see how well I can preach the word of God. You know, like God, you know, He taught me humility. You know, through my own, He He taught me humility that it's not about it's not about you. You know, it's not about you know others. You know, looking at me like oh wow, you know, no. It's about you and me. It's that relationship. And when I when I learned that it 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 really like you know that again helped me change the you know like to be justified by faith. So then I um then I as I spent time as I went on the ministry um I didn't even realize um but when I when I um my parents told me have you seen the difference and I said difference in what? Is there difference when you first started off with the ministry and now? Because when I first started the ministry I was insecure. i was condemning myself i was all of that you know but because i was scared because it was fear i was scared of falling i was scared of um f- failure you know but now um it's so it's it's so different you know when you when you're focused on you know your you, by grace that grace of god you know you don't care like you don't care if you if you fall if you make a few mistakes if you um do something wrong because you know god loves you either way he's going to he's going to help you get back up either way so now the difference is now that there's no fear there's no insecurity there's no um there's no condemnation even the devil comes and tries to tell me something immediately i said who are you when i understood what it means by god's grace and to be justified by faith it's a game changer it 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 really 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 makes a very big difference because the moment you start thinking that you are justified by your works by the law which which it's very easy to fall into because that's the world and if you're really in touch with the world then you're going to fall into that and it's hard and and um, i'm so grateful and thankful to god for my parents and uh, you know for the jclm family you know um for all of you know all you know even aliston and all his classes and all the people you know um you know cian gisel all of you guys you know you all ask such good questions um you all bring up such good points um like it 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 you know sometimes you like you know i always i always think of myself like i can't ask questions because people will think how will you not know the question? how do you not know the answer you know that that was always the, but now it's it's like when you when you when you understand god's grace you don't care what other people think you just sit there because you want to learn more about god whether you know the answer whether you don't know the answer whether you ask 50 questions whether you ask five questions or you ask no questions you don't care because all you have all you want to know is about jesus you don't want to know about how much other people um think about you you know how how you look in their eyes have you fallen in their eyes no so you know that's that's just the grace of god you know it 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 takes you to a different level you like it when that changing your thinking it's it's a big big process you know i used to take it lightly but it can't be taken lightly <laughs> so praise god that's just something yeah i wanted to share praise god praise god jade you know what you spoke right now right it's right from your heart and i'm telling you your testimony has blessed everyone because we don't realize when we've yeah. fallen into this yeah i'm telling you i've experienced the same thing this year i experienced <laughs> the same thing this year i was yeah i, I was living under uh, okay so i used to think okay i didn't pray today or i didn't do this i didn't wake up early today i feel useless i feel worthless i'm preaching but what am i doing behind behind the curtains you know i used to get those thoughts but i heard recently actually a few months back in one teaching that god loves you not because you're lovely because he is love yeah god loves you because he is love not because of what you do because he himself is love and god is faithful even if we are faithless thank you so much jeet for sharing this testimony because god, you know this is so this is pure this is what we needed this is the you know it's the perfect testimony for this teaching because we were literally learning this maybe if someone okay. didn't understand thank they can holy understand spirit. yeah thank you holy spirit they can understand through your testimony because condemnation okay. is a 
tormenting experience it's it is horrible it's literally hell on earth mm, it is yeah it's it's so it's so bad because you're more conscious about how good you are and then one day when you become bad you're just like what have i done what have i done it's that worthless feeling and But, you got to yeah. share after yes yes praise yes. god jade amazing praise god Thank you are you. awesome you are awesome praise jesus you are such a blessing praise god praise god praise sister priya has raised her hand yeah praise god lovely testimony jade and i agree with you because on a daily basis when we make mistakes and you know the devil fills our minds with lies thoughts that you know oh you're so bad you're this and that we fall into that trap but the best part is even though we fall immediately the holy spirit reminds us there's no condemnation in christ jesus jesus loves you right here right now are you going to remain there in that lies or are you going to come out of it and seriously that gives a lot of peace and joy like you know yeah. every day it's like there's another joy to doing work like i confess this colossians 3:23 whatsoever you do do it with all your heart not unto men but unto the lord so when you do it with that mindset that you're working for jesus everything around you becomes beautiful praise god i just wanted to share this thank Amen. you jesus praise god praise god Melanie uh, thank you sister priya praise god melanie has raised her hand yeah you praise can god go ahead yourself. yeah this yes like, yeah this has to your voice is breaking my voice is breaking now it's clear okay, okay, okay. i have to leave for the next session is that okay yeah yeah praise god thank you so much aliston thank you aliston thank you so thank much you. thank you everyone bye praise bye god. bye by yeah melanie wanted to share her testimony you can go ahead melanie all right thank you so much jazel um hi everyone my name is melanie and this is the first time i'm attending um one of the zoom meetings and i have to say i'm so proud of all you girls and all you boys how truly blessed you are in the lord um So I was always born as a Catholic. I grew up in a Catholic family in a Catholic household. And for a very long time my relationship with Jesus was just church catechism, church catechism, which I think is pretty much the same thing for all of us growing up. And then when I was a teenager between the ages of like 13, 14, 15, um my relationship with Jesus had gone astray. I had gotten into a very toxic friendship. and they used to always put me down so i didn't really know what my self worth was for a very long time then at the age of like 16 17 i was able to get introduced back into the word of god and even though it did help me with my spiritual growth a lot when i went to university i did feel that i was going back to square one because in university life is very secular it's not religious so there's a lot of things that are happening which are going against the church and against the teaching so i used to feel very lonely because i felt i was the only one who was pursuing god and there was nobody else there then one day when i had gone to mass i don't know from how okay it's like i don't even realize and know how this happened but there was a catholic organization in my university who approached me and i felt that god brought me to mass on a monday it's a monday so i usually go to mass on sundays because it's um the day you're supposed to go to church but that day i had a desire to go on monday so i'd gone on monday and there was a catholic organization called cco and they introduced themselves to me and they said do you want to come and do you want to uh, be part of our ministry and i said yes i would love to and then slowly gradually but steadily i was able to connect with people from the faith in a secular country and in a secular world and now that i'm in the faith i feel so strong and i feel the presence of god in me even though there are times when people may judge me for my beliefs people may mock me for my beliefs because there are many people out there who don't believe in christ or who think that people who believe in religion are stupid <laughs> um but the very fact that i've been able to connect with these people is just so beautiful and many many thanks to god and thank you jizel for allowing me to share my testimony thank you so much praise god praise god 
Thank you so much, Melni, for your beautiful testimony. Praise God. See, God has chosen you. You didn't choose God. God chose you. And the reason why you are there and the people around you may not be in Christ is because Jesus made you the light of the world so that his light is spread through you in that darkness. Okay? Maybe in, in, in the places where we are, maybe our workplace or our university or anywhere we are, we might not be able to relate to the people around us. Because God has consecrated you. It is written in Jeremiah 1.5. God has set you apart so that you are the one representing Christ in that place. And now when Jesus in you is spread to the other people, they are converted and now they are the light of the world as well. And so that's why. And see how God works all things for your good because you love him. And he has brought you together with the body of Christ. And that's so beautiful. Praise God. But never feel lonely because these negative feelings and the feelings of loneliness is just a lie of the devil because Jesus is all you need. It, your, your relationship with Jesus is personal. It should not be based on whether there are, there are other people in the body of Christ around you because, see, we as believers are, a, are, are, not, uh, are not of the world, right? So th there might not be a majority percentage around you. But Jesus is always with you, in you, and for you. And so it doesn't matter if your family is not around you or the body of Christ is not around you. Jesus is inside of you and he's, he's sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient for you. And yeah, so you are the light of the world in your area and you are spreading God's light there. So never feel lonely. Always fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Okay, and always read the word of God because the word of God is comfort. You get comfort from the understanding of the word. Okay, praise God. I'm so happy for you, Melanie. Praise God. By the way, Melanie was my, um, was my classmate since middle school. And I've known her since primary school. Yeah. yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Practically grown up together. Lots yeah. of memories. Yeah, praise, praise God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Okay, this was a wonderful session. All glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All of you are such a big blessing. Really, all of you are so amazing. The Lord has wonderfully and beautifully made each and every one of you. You are God's masterpiece. Praise God. Okay? And you are who God says you are. You are not your mistakes. You are not your sins. You are not your negative thoughts. You are not who people say you are. You are not what your past says you are. You are who God says you are. Okay? Praise God. All right. Would anyone like to say the closing prayer? Okay. Um, Melanie, would you like to say the closing prayer since you're new today? Praise God. Sure. Okay. Let's sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we want to thank you for Alliston for his beautiful preaching today on the Word of God. We want to thank you, God, for enriching Giselle and Jade with um, Jade's testimony and um, for everyone else who's present here today. We want to consecrate, we want to ask for your blessings and for your guidance in our daily lives as we leave this prayer meeting that your grace will remain with us. Uh, Mother Mary, you be with us, be our guide and be our strength today as we um, start a new beginning through you. Amen. Amen. Amen.